Welcome to this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on culture and identity, focusing on nationality and identity. Emil Durkheim was one of the first sociologists to examine the importance of national identity, claiming that the primary function of national identity was to reinforce social solidarity and give individuals a sense of belonging to something bigger than themselves. Whilst this was true in early modern society, attitudes towards national identity have changed somewhat over the years. Anderson and others such as Bella suggest that nationalism has replaced religion in giving individuals a sense of collective identity. Bella argued that civil religion incorporated forms of nationalism, particularly in the USA where American exceptionalism had become like a religion. However, in recent years there has been a decline in the number of people stating that they have a specific national identity. In the most recent UK census in 2021, the number of respondents selecting a British rather than English, Welsh, Scottish or Irish nationality, rose to over 50% of respondents, from around 20% in 2011. In this video we're going to look at some of the ways national identity forms, and how different social institutions play a role in that. National identity forms through the process of socialisation into cultural norms and values, most often through education and media. In education, pupils learn about the achievements of a nation through history and the cultural rituals and practices of a nation through day-to-day -day interactions in school and other events such as assemblies. Shudson argues that education alongside media acts as socialising agents that teach individuals about their social history and what it is to be a member of that society. In the media, this can be through sporting events, royal weddings, national celebrations such as VE Day or Remembered Sunday. This gives individuals a sense of being part of something bigger than themselves, a sense of the shared history they have with others, and helps to reaffirm an individual's commitment to being part of the national identity. Other ways in which national identity is formed is through the interpretation of symbols and signs. Individuals are often surrounded by elements of national identity. During major sporting events, flags are put up in windows and on cars and on bars and shops. Other symbols include currency, the playing of national anthems, food, music and rituals. However, this can be problematic for some, as symbols have dual or even multiple meanings based upon how an individual interprets them. Flags and statues are often perceived as embracing a colonial past and the time of empire, and in changing times can be seen as a sign of oppression for some in society. For example, when the statue of Edward Colston in Bristol was thrown into the River Severn during the Black Lives Matter protests. Colston's statue was seen as a representation of the oppression of the transatlantic slave trade. Colston's fortune had come from the slave trade. What is problematic about symbols of national identity is that they are open to interpretation, and often these interpretations are passed down from one generation to the next, without critical analysis or an understanding of the multiple meanings that a symbol can have. Another aspect of national identity, particularly following the process of globalisation, is how individuals can hold multiple national identities at a specific time. With only 8% of respondents in the most recent census having a non-UK identity only, Many more held multiple national identities alongside an identity that was either British, English, Welsh, Irish or Scottish. Part of this reason is the influence of diasporas. A diaspora is a cultural group that whilst displaced from their traditional homeland or having migrated to another country, maintain close ties with that nation, engaging in cultural practices and rituals that will be associated with that nation. These cultural norms are then passed down from generation to generation and help keep the culture alive and give individuals in that culture a sense of who they are and where they come from. A further impact of globalisation on national identities has been the creation of hybrid identities, ones that combine elements of different national identities. Although critics would suggest that globalisation has largely diminished many of these, replacing them with a homogeneous westernised identity, the extent to which this is true is a matter of debate between competing sociological perspectives. Has there been a decline in national identity in the UK? Well, this is debatable, with increased displays of nationalism in the UK following the vote to leave the European Union, 
the rise of popularist politicians and moral panic surrounding migration in the UK and the subsequent media coverage. Whilst the last UK census had more people declaring themselves as British rather than English, Welsh, Irish or Scottish, there has been increased pressure for Scottish and Welsh independence from the UK. Furthermore, increased regional differences in handling of issues such as the COVID-19 pandemic and dissent towards popularist policies has seen more individuals questioning what it means to have a national identity. There is an apparent division in UK society between nationalist and globalist views, and this has impacted on national identity. Furthermore, the fragmentation of society and changing norms and values has led to the growth of a far more diverse range of identities in contemporary society, with the importance of nationality being a source of identity for some, whilst others adopt a more global perspective. That concludes this Tutor to You Sociology topic video on culture and identity, focusing on national identity. Thanks for watching.